Hey, chill out in Tobago. It's me, Jenaj, formerly known as Yogi. Just in case some of you know me as Yogi. Doing music in Trinidad, rap, hip hop. <sighs> yeah, a lot actually, you know. Everything is just unfolding itself so nicely. Um, you know, working with so many best producers in Trinidad, uh, guys like Anson, uh, Track Seven, First Class, uh, and as you know, just to name a few. Um, you know, just focusing on putting out some good music out there, some good quality music coming from Trinidad that you know Trinidad can be proud of. Uh, so many songs I have out or videos as as you know um, I have a song called BNS by Ziggy Ish that on YouTube right now and um, that video was shot about uh, three weeks ago it was always number one on you know the OMG segment you know, for the week you know sister called my oh, yeah, TV um, but yeah, that's one of them. Then I have a song with uh, Jimmy October, uh, new classic where you get a nice old school feel where we had to take it back on them a little bit. Um, that's, you know, some of the stuff that I have out right now um, in terms of that. And also, have, um, you know, check out my SoundCloud, J Nash on SoundCloud where you can, you know, hear some, some mixtape stuff that I also did. Yeah. But make sure to check out the video on YouTube though, BNS. Or bad zigger ish on YouTube. Subscribe to the Uber channel too. Man. Sure. I'm working on a collective of music, but um, I have this song with Jimmy October that's coming real soon to you. Put a hole on your guilt. Mm, track is fire. Um, that's what I'm working on right now. Me personally, um, I want to put uh, a collection of work, but I want to do probably like five songs where it's, it's a bit different from what you might hear with BNS or New Classic. It's a bit more personal and you could actually listen to the music and almost could tell what type of artist that you're listening to. Or you can kind of paint a picture of what my life is like through uh, the songs that I want to do. It's just how it's coming together. It's, I, I really don't know. But as of right now, we're just working on them summer hits. To give boy, said Jeremy Lovely, and um, I grew up uh, Caranage, Lance me to be exact uh, all my life, and you know I went to school. I, I went to Anthony's College, uh, graduated, and you know, just like any normal kid, I just always you know love music, and used to rap in school a lot, a lot even before rapping in school. I was just home, first get drawn to that music. Uh, by listening to guys like Eminem and all that day and um, it just, I was just always drawn to that art form of, of using words so creatively and, and actually creating something from scratch and having your music uh, be something that somebody can go to and listen to and something that they can relate to at the same time so you know I was drawn to that we started you know freestyling me and my homies on the block who beat boxing I rapping you know, I never really took it that serious, it was just like a hobby until, you know, I was in school and I was about to leave school and I realized, you know what, I, I just can't get this thing up maybe and I'm good, so maybe I should really, you know, pursue it seriously. That's why I made uh, my first mixtape called The Resume, which was back when I was 17. Yeah, it was, it was like a bunch of beats that I was just feeling at the time. Uh, Chris Brown, uh, Deuces was hot at the time, I did a Deuces, I did a... Rick Ross, I think I'm big merch. I did that, and it was just a, a whole bunch of stuff. And it was, it was, I need the resume because it was something that I said I'm gonna put out to see if the game or the rap culture would accept me. So it's like you're applying for a job, and this is your resume, this is what you have to judge by. So I sent in my resume via my mixtape, and it was getting some nice feedback. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, I was getting some nice feedback. We had jerseys with my face printed on it. No matter, I look like Jack's son. But, it, 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 you know, we had a nice little movement back then when I was 17 and then I just kind of fell off until, um, you know, when you get older and you realize it's not bringing in an income or it's not doing anything much for it and you have the, that's when the reality does hit you. And you have to work or you have responsibilities or you have to think about okay maybe I have to go back to school 
you, you start thinking all these different things. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just give this a break for a while and just go back to you know just being a regular person, which is not bad. It's not bad, but you know just being you know regular. And um, I tried, but then I got into contact with Titan, who is one of the people, one of my biggest inspirations, Titan. And he was like, yo. I like what you're doing, I like what he was doing. And we just decided, you know, to get together to start making music and that's when I, I got back and taking music. By that time my voice had matured, I wasn't 17 anymore. My voice had matured. I started, you know, paying out some good stuff now. It wasn't that 17 year old Jane Ash. Have a little bass in it. Yeah, it's a little bass in it. So the people, you know, when they hear my voice, it was like, yo, your voice, but I was like, yeah, just just get a bit more mature now. And um then I bought another mixtape entitled Years of Gain Intelligence, which was back then I was rapping, my name was Yogi, and that was an abbreviation for it, Years of Gain Intelligence. And I dropped the mixtape and it was getting mad for what people was like, yo, what's up? But then Titan died and um, we all got together to do this show for him and that's how I met him in October. Titan is, he was uh, a guy that, he did music in Trinidad and he was one of the most energetic, uh, inspired individuals that you probably could ever meet. And he was just so loving and he would talk to anybody and everybody and they would just be drawn to him. He was just like, a, you know, a really good guy and he would help anybody. And he went overseas for, to study and he died over there. His family decided to, you know, throw, um, to draw a tribute concert for him. Um, that's how I met uh, Jimmy October. He was one of the artists that was supposed to perform also. And, you know, it was just, um, the chemistry was just there with me and Jimmy. We would always be laughing, we would always be chilling. He was, he was young, he was passionate about the music also. And it was like, you know, even after the tribute, after the concert, we still talk. We still, you know, tried making moves and then it was just a matter of, yo, bro, we're doing this. I feel like me and you could probably make a change and he, he was he was agreeing with it and he was like, yo, I think you should join Overdose. And that's how I ended up on Overdose, where it's the biggest team in China. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, honestly, I don't even know her, to tell you the industry. I just, people ask that question sometimes and I just be like, I don't know. Because while I was um, back at, um, yeah, back back when I was a bit younger, when I just just started music, uh, heavily influenced by you know guys like Eminem, guys like DMX, guys like Fifty Cent. Um, that's the voice you heard it in. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly that. That's the voice that I heard it in. That's how I always thought rap supposed to be or supposed to sound. In you know being at that age, and that's where you, you mostly gain it from. We were on the, you know, we used to beatbox home and have little battles, but I always used to be the guy doing the beatboxing. Now, I had a friend that used to, he used to do all the rapping. But when he would rap, he would be like, you know, I come down the road, you see, and I'm down the road, you see. And then I was like, yo, let me, let me give it a shot now. But then when I give it a shot, it come out different. You know, it came out like, Hey, we on the highway. Look, ma, I'm about to kill this dude on the highway. Freestyle Friday. And it was like, oh, come be something like that. But that's exactly how it came out. It wasn't nothing like I practiced. It just came out like that. And then after that, it just felt so natural to me to rap like that. It's, 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 I, I don't know where the accent comes from. It's just, it's, that's just how it sounds. What's not? So when I started rapping, I didn't sound like my virgin who was saying, Come down the road, you see. And I, no, I was trying to song like Eminem, I was trying to song like 50 Cent. So it was like, uh, I got uh, this, uh, and I was trying to rap fast, fast, fast like Eminem. And, uh, and then I just, it just stick with my way. That's just how it always was. And then I started a clone too, I could imitate anybody now, but and imitate people and accents and all that, so it was nothing. For me to just pick up the accent really is nothing. So, and then, it, you know, you just incorporate it in your rap and then that's where it is again. So you can kind of say rap and it's just me being a clone on a track and so you know, you're doing it. <laughs> I guess you can say that. <laughs> the future. I see it, it already changing, 
because before you wouldn't have uh, people like Inzy uh, throwing shows with him rapping and I just think it didn't have a forum. It still don't have a forum or a platform for for rap or hip hop in Trinidad. Every time growing up and I would be rapping and people would say, well, why you don't do soca? Why you don't do this? Why you don't do that? You know, it just kind of derived you know, from from that because it's not something, you know, they always say, it's not something that's recognized in Trinidad. But it's changing now. You hear Mark Hardy and Rod on the radio. You hear Jimmy October on the radio, Chromatics on the radio, Nebula on the radio. And they're doing hip hop, they're doing rap. And now you find the radio is like, What's going on? It's like a whole new wave just coming, and I, I just want to say I'm just glad to be a part of that. I want to be one of the people that plays a big part in that <coughs> because when talking to Jimmy, me and Jimmy have a lot of conversations, and I was like, Yo, dog, it, we could be the, the innovators in Trinidad in rap on a whole. We supposed to be the ones that when you look at Trinidad and you look at rap, you're supposed to see us and in. in you know, probably cliche to say, but make history in, in Trinidad as the yo. It didn't have what it had before Jimmy October and Jay Nash do that old school new classic video. It didn't have way to have when they them, when they was rapping. You had to, you know, people always trying to derive it from that. So the future is rap actually having a big place in Trinidad, just as it has, you know, in other countries. I feel like Trinidadians sometimes they always uh you know not that is a bad thing but put soca up on a pedestal but they they put soca alone like it have no other genre of music so people are doing that might like r b that do not r b they don't get a bus people are doing rap or people are doing conscious probably conscious might probably get more of a bus but you know you always find other genres are kind of looked at like nah we hear about soca and that shouldn't be because if, if it is you have your style of music and your love and what you love to do, you know, you want your stuff to hold some kind of significance too and not because it's not so good, they look at it like, yeah, it's not so good, you know. But I think I think it's changing. It was like that, but it's not like that no more. And we just plan on changing that and, and being a big part of that change. So. It's just so strange because when I was growing up, Soka wasn't the music. It wasn't. It wasn't the music. Nobody wanna hear Soka. Soka was and <coughs> and Marshall changed that. Exactly. So Marshall, yeah. It is that that's what I'm saying. In every well, I wouldn't say in every genera- generation, but you always have somebody, some some one person or a few people that come along that make a big change. Marshall being one of them. You know, for soca music and him being, you know, a pioneer and that great person that he is today. And I was like, yo, instead of me at four men and kind of adjusting to what already being done, I want to be like Marsha. I want to set up like a pace or a lane in Trinidad that you could come and do any type of music, like not just rap, any type of music you want to do that you think is popping or you have a connection to, you should be able to do that. And not you know have somebody tell you you know why you doing that do soca that should never be the case so I mean I, I like I like that example of Marshall but that's a perfect example of, of what we're trying to do I think I think to um, the the heads or the people that could put music on the map they're not solely to blame for that I think um, Trinidadians or artists need to take the craft a bit more serious I meaning you know you can't have a beat that you know is mediocre your lyrics is not up to par you didn't pre- pay for production you get it free from your brethren and then expect a radio guy to play it in the club no you need to if this is your craft this is where you want to do you need to invest in it if you need to you know work hard and save and then pay towards a good song with good production proper stuff that you can come and give a dj and you know for a fact they cannot deny that it's good then it will play and that's 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 all it's about people was you know i think was too lazy in the past now people are trying to work everybody doing videos now you wasn't seeing that before nebula dropping uh, they just drop another video chromatics and nebula drop a video young brother mark hardy drop a video me and jimmy so it, now it's like oh 
everybody's eyes just open you now and it's changing now. And people are seeing that. My OG moment would always be the first time I heard my song on the radio. Because it was, you know, as a kid growing up here, hearing uh, all the people that you look up to on the radio. And then, you know, this year I was even telling my work employees, I was like, Jed, this year I'm getting on the radio. I'm making sure this year I'm not passing on my game on the radio. So when I made BNS and um, it played on the radio by Exmo, Exmo and they bust it on the station. When it played, I was like taping the radio and I was like, that was that moment when I felt like something gonna happen. Like so that was that was my OMG moment right there. And it was just like me, it was like almost me telling people, yo, it's in your face now. You, you can't even deny it, I'm here. So that was that was perfect for me. That was like uh, OMG moment. <laughs>